There's a saying, if you allow your passion to become your purpose, it will one day become your profession. Our job is to give people the opportunity at the fish of a lifetime. But on our days off, it's our turn. So fishing in the state of Florida is most definitely a seasonal uh, situation. We've got the, the transition from summer to fall is very important for the migration of most of our uh, pelagic fish as well as fish like cobia, uh, even redfish schools. All of those fish will travel on the season change. In early October, uh, we start maybe seeing a few cold fronts. Uh, but as we get into November, we still get some of those bigger ones. But a lot of times people don't notice it on land, but being on the water all the time, you see a lot of uh, just fish change. And a lot of that is migratory species that are on the move, uh, birds and bait. A lot of things happen on the water different uh, that really kind of clue you into that season change and when it's fixing to be right. Well, we're on a full moon which means a few things. It means we've got big tides yeah. in and out. Uh, pretty low this morning, like dirt low actually. Yeah, it is. But it will come in quick. Once that moon sets, it'll come in really fast. So uh, let's do a little inshore fishing and then do you think yeah. we're gonna be able to get out offshore? I think so, you know, the wind forecast was laid down even more a little bit later in the morning, early afternoon. And uh, we'll get some bait on the beach, run inside, see if we can pick off a few uh, snook and redfish and then uh, do a little finger test on the wind <laughs> and let her rip. <laughs> Go for some bigger critters? Yeah, man. All right, man. Sounds let's good. Let's, let's do it. Low, 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 baby. Mm hmm. Hey, we're getting close to that bar, too. I think I just saw a flicker out here, it's too. It's flicking right on the beach about 10 yards ahead of you. Okay. That's pretty good meat pile right there, buddy. That should be it. That's pretty good load, I think. Should be game over. Oh, that's, a, that's 150 baits right there. So even with small changes in nature that, that we see on water, really on a daily basis, we get into this fall pattern. Uh, we see things like the, the bait fish making a move. We see these pelagic species making a move. And that for us is really kind of kind of ramps us up a little bit about what's fixing to happen for that fall bite. Low tide was at 7.44. Okay. Actually 7.30. So the really. water's crushing in, but they're still down in that trench for, for sure. Yeah, I think so too. And we got to just get to the north side or the east side of that trench, right? Yeah. This time of year is, is definitely one of my favorite. Everything starts to, to get away from the, the stickiness, the hotness, the heavy, hot, humid uh, days and mornings that we've had for you know months, really since June, we've been dealing with just heat. So when you get into mid-October and into November, we're looking at cooler mornings, uh, minor cold fronts that push through, and that definitely starts moving those fish around. And it, it, truthfully, it gets them real spunky and gets them fired up. And in turn, us as anglers and in guides, we get fired up as well. We really wanted to keep an eye on the winds. You know, it, the day before, it really, really cranked, and the offshore was just a no-go. So having, you know, sitting on the flat and catching some fish, we had a ball doing that. But Jeremy and I are looking at each other and, and kind of looking at the wind and seeing is it, is it time to go? And yeah, it was about an hour and a half for that. It was time to go. We are always, as fishing guides, uh, our minds are going different places. We're definitely focused on what we're doing, but we're also thinking, uh, I believe that wind just died down enough for us to roll offshore, even if it's you know, 10, 15 miles away. So this time of year really allows us to pay attention to the elements and if the elements change and allow us to go offshore, nine times out of 10, we're, we're gonna do it. So 
when we were inside, we were catching some uh, some redfish and some snook. Yeah. All of a sudden, that wind just stopped. So gave us a perfect opportunity to run. Right. When that happens, you know, you know it's spinning, and you've got three, four hours probably yep. to get out here and get it before the westerly kicks back up. Well, we looked at that, what that weather is going to do tomorrow. It shouldn't be a problem catching a few fish. I can I can say that much. So the first thing we saw is a crazy number of barracuda. Uh, now. Truth is, we love to catch them. They're a lot of fun, but when we got there, put our motor, troll motor in spot lock, we were able to sit there and we started chumming and the barracuda came alive. Oh, cuda, hot on me. Oh, he got it. He got it. I've got this barracuda sitting right here in the water and it's still splashing around. I'm kind of waiting for it to calm down a little bit before I get my hands close to its face. And I no sooner do, and I look out, and I see three or four cobia literally swimming right to the boat. Well, sure enough, I look over, Jeremy has a bait already rigged up, ready to cast at him. Perfect execution, it couldn't have happened any better. He made the cast, well, the first one swam right by it, the second one says, oh, no, 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 we're gonna take some of that. Oh, eat it, eat it all. Oh yeah, he got it, he got it. Yeah, baby! Big guy on um, Big Cobia, boys. Big Cobia. Good spot, Jay. There was three of them. I know. Hey, I close know. that up for me, brother. Hey, that was cool, man. Oh, dude. Now he's figuring out what's happening to him here. Got him on the tarpon stick, thank God. I'm gonna put this guy on the ice, big guy. Yeah, man. We don't get that much opportunity to pull on those, and I tell you, ah. that's a pretty good eat. <laughs> By the way, we get that to the boat, I'm coming to your house for dinner. You don't have to convince me, brother. <laughs> oh, look, you even have a bug grip. I got a boga, I got a gaff, I got a net. I mean, do you have a big net? I got a net. If you haven't seen a cobia before and it comes out of the depths and, and, and looks, at, uh, looks at you for the first time, you're more than likely going to think it, that it's a shark. Uh, everybody who fishes for cobia at one time or another has made a mistake uh, on, a, on a cobia thinking it was a shark. They may not admit it, but they have. And I, I fall into that category as well. Especially the bigger ones. You just don't exactly know exactly what you're looking at until you get a good four or five seconds of uh, vision on them and then it, it, it pops in. Oh, that's a cobia. I better get my stuff together. All right, there we go. Oh, yeah. All right, you got slack. Uh, yeah, but yeah. he's barely fits in the net. <laughs> all right, that's all right. The net's gonna nope, break. Nope, nope. Dude, that's a freaking stud and a half. That's Give awesome. That, huh? Hey, that's the smallest one of the three. I know, there were torpedoes coming right to us. Yeah, he's just the fastest. Okay. Oh! Stud. It's a great fish. Yeah, man. So being prepared for you know that type of chaos, you know, with the cobias coming up to the boat, is super critical. You know, having having the right rigs already set together with live bait, and of course having a couple rods rigged and ready to go with some artificial is always a smart move. So having a plug that I was using, it's a big swim bait, weighs like two and a half ounces. I can cast it a mile. I can cover a lot of ground and it's super flashy and I think that's one of the things that those fish really keyed in on you know having chummed up some of those little pilchards I think they were really jacked up on the idea of eating something that was flashy. Cobias, Cobias, get them, three Jack. of them, three of them coming at me. Okay see if you can hook one on the Artie I'll get got, you. I got one on Artie, got, I had one on Artie. Keep them coming. He ate it again. He just ate it again. <laughs> Three of them still right Stick here. Stick them, bub. Stick them. Okay, okay, okay. They're still right here. And one's a giant. One is an absolute giant. Let's see if I can keep them right here for a minute. You can get a bait right here if you want. I'm coming, I'm coming. Are they still there? Yeah, they were right here with him. They, they can't be too far. So fighting cobia on the rod is, is something that can get really addicting. They'll charge at a bait, and as soon as they eat it, they immediately turn away, and when you come tight on them, 
he realizes at that point that it, there's a problem and he does nothing but head shakes all the way as he sounds. When he's diving that hard to the bottom, we're trying to keep him out of the wreck. We're using a heavy 65 pound braid and really trying to pull that fish away from that structure. On the plug? Yeah, baby. Oh my gosh. Come on. Oh, it's a good one too. Incredible. <laughs> Come on, where are you, big boys? The the one that was leading this guy? Large. I mean, he's hooked right in the corner. Oh. Easy, big fella. <laughs> I don't want to gaff over top of that line. Got it. Got Coming it. in. Everybody Got clear. It. Slack, slack. That boy, Jay. <laughs> Good job, brother. Hey, uh, who's cooking? <laughs> Good job, Jay. Good job. Put him in the box. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Son, that's what it's all about right there, boy. That's a great fish. Dude. Great fish. We gonna eat some Kobe and I, bud. Are we now? <laughs> God. Yeah. Good job, man. Stud. Good job. We'll take him. In the in the ice. Yep. So the state of Florida, the Fish and Wildlife Commission, just moved the limits on cobia from uh, six fish per vessel down to two fish per vessel, which is definitely a good move in my opinion. That's a fish we want to protect to the best of our ability. And you know, truthfully, a big old cobia over 33 inches to the fork really gives you a pile of meat. So to get that opportunity uh, five, six times, a little wolf pack of cobia kept coming up to us for some odd reason. Uh, they must have liked us, and, and I'm sure glad they did, because that was exciting. Well, finishing up the day, you know, Jeremy and I, as we're offshore, we look at each other, and it's, it's kind of that wow factor. It all came together. Uh, a bit surprising uh, based on the cobias and, and what we're able to put together there, but. You know, on our ride back, we talked about just what we experienced and how, you know, that kind of day is certainly going to be a memory that's going to last for a long time. And, you know, when we come in through the past and realize that what we did from the diversity level, from fishing inshore in the morning to running offshore and having a blast, there's, there's something to be said about that. And that's something that keeps us doing it. And um, it, it's tough to beat, no doubt about it. Anytime we have that opportunity, you got to take advantage of it, and we had a great day that day.